What's going on guys, bsgt 2 trackfan 88 here, and I've got a real treat for you tonight. This is the Sony BDP-S300 Blu-ray player, or as I like to call it, a Blu-ray player back from when they had balls. Um, this was a, I think, mid-level, nothing special about it, um, to my knowledge, no Ethernet. I could be wrong, I haven't looked at it that much, but this is back when Blu-ray players were still very expensive and relatively new. Um, and to keep it simple, like look at this thing, like nowadays they're just pieces of plastic and I know you can't really tell right now, but it has like a glass mirror blue to it and it just looks gorgeous. I've always loved Sony Blu-ray players from back in the day and you know this is very primitive and huge. I mean, this is a Blu-ray disc. Look at the size of the thing. I mean, this is uh, this is pretty pretty awesome find. I had this Blu-ray player. Um, I technically had it before the house fire. I think I sold it to a buddy of mine. But what I'm thinking is, I, I've had two Sony players. One I sold, and one I had at the time, as well as a Panasonic. And I think this is the one I had, and I had the older, thicker, heavier version of it. Because I honestly don't remember mine being this well, short. Make all the jokes you want. Uh, but real quick, before I spin her around, one of the really cool things that I love about this old Blu-ray player is the remote. Look at this thing. It's huge. It has every button you would possibly ever want on it. Let me let me flip the camera around here. Right. It even has the reflective same color glass or whatever it is, plastic or whatever. But uh, it just it looks badass. You're not going to lose this anytime soon. I mean, the thing takes two double A's. It's huge. It just, sorry, it just looks, looks awesome. Um, you know, you can still get these remotes. They still cost a pretty penny. But uh, anyway, so I'm gonna, let me flip the Blu-ray player around. I'll be right back. Okay, so something all you audio lovers out there will see right away. Uh, well, first of all, this is very dusty. Um, I should take a can of air or something and clean this out. Even the friggin' connectors are, are pretty grimy here. But what I like about this, this Blu-ray player has everything. Of course you have your HDMI, but then you still have your video out, your S video out, your component video, which will give you up to 1080i, your coax and optical digitals, and of course your regular audio outs, and your individual 5.1 audio outputs and for some people that's huge. Um, I like this because you can theoretically record just the audio if you want to without having to use any digital programming, especially back in the days when you know you, you can torrent movies but you couldn't really get 5.1 uh, audio from a Blu-ray disc, you'd have to actually physically make it. So I just wanted to show you guys the back of it, it even has a cooling fan. Granted this thing's a freaking beast but you don't see fans on Blu-ray players anymore. So I have not turned this on yet, I just got it home, I cleaned it up a little bit in the front. Um, it was selling for 34 bucks, and I talked to them, like, listen, this is a very old player, can you do any better on it? So I got it for $10, and it still works, hopefully. That's what we'll figure out here. So, real quick, made in Malaysia, model BDP S300. I don't know the year that this one was made, but I'll do a Google search, and I'll be right back. Let's see if this thing works. Okay, so uh, I'm on Blu-ray.com, a site that I go to very often. I should actually really update my profile now that I have my, my, my clip system set up. But I wanted to show you guys, this is the same player. It was uh, discontinued. It's I think that's from June 2007, so this is almost a decade old Blu-ray player. You kind of forget how long Blu-ray's been out. Uh, and here's the big problem with this player for me personally. I'm going to keep it if it works. I haven't. I have not even turned it on yet. I did plug in the HDMI and the power cable to this computer monitor, so hopefully we can get something going on here. But, um, uh, here's my problem. It'll do 1080p, it'll play Blu-ray discs, most of them. It does not do 3D, but I could care less about that. It's obviously not portable. The S301 is Costco's version. Maybe that's what I had. But anyway, um, supported resolution's fine. It'll do 30p, it'll do 24p, which is a good... But here's the problem. Here's the problem for I'm trying to zoom in with my camera. Here's the problem for me. It does not do DivX, but that's fine. Audio playback is the problem. 
It does Dolby Digital, it does Dolby Digital Plus, which was a format back in the day. Sorry, let me pan the camera up here. It does not do Dolby HD, it does not do Bitstream, it does not do DTS HD, it does normal, it's it's basically do, um, DVD player quality audio, except for Dolby Digital Plus, which was a short-lived audio format. As you can see, if I zoom out here, there's a lot of red tape, or a lot of red with this. Uh, obviously, it'll do 7.1 through HDMI, but it'll do 5.1 through analog, and of course the optical. Um, it'll do 192 hertz. Um, chipset, say whatever. Thing weighs 9.9 .9 pounds. <laughs> um, so this is a, like I said, it's an entry level. If not, when it first came out, maybe considered mid level, but probably quickly replaced. Um, I know I had a variant of this player, and like I said, it's just there. You go. Now you can see that a lot better. It's just a very sick looking, awesome looking piece of equipment that when it's on your shelf it looks like a badass. Even though it can't do the audio codecs that I like, it'd be nice to just to play a disc on it every now and then experience that old Blu-ray menu without all the goddamn ads and all that stuff. So it's plugged in, I think. The power cable's very it's not snug. It's loose as they would say. So let's hit the power button. See if she powers on. Woo! That's another cool feature, that little blue light. Just little things that Sony did a bit did back then to make things look awesome. And I know this thing has a long boot time, so... <clears throat> um, what else? Oh, let's look at the current firmware. If we can. General media video. Sorry, I'm doing this to you. Um, remote. Blah, blah, blah. Doesn't tell me about the firmware. I can probably find it. Um, excessively slow boot cycle isn't into, uh, upgradable for Java Live. Yeah, I know. Of course, not a lot of Blu-rays use that anymore. So, anyway, I'm going to switch inputs here. It says power on. Now, this computer monitor loves to automatically switch to inputs if one of them is not being used. So, let's see if it's turned on yet. It says loading. Oh, come on, camera. Focus. <gasps> Woo! Woohoo! She works. We have a menu. What? What the fuck? Were you... Something's in here. There is a disc in here. <laughs> it's not a Blu-ray disc. It's a DVD. Um, menu. You can tell by it's, it's a DVD too by how low res that is. I, honest to God, I have no friggin' clue what the hell is in here. I'm gonna skip. 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 Well, actually, let's see what trailer this is. I'll cut it out for... No fucking way. Ooh. <laughs> what Star Wars is this? Star, Star Wars 5, The Empire Strikes Back? Bullshit. Oh, by the way, I hit the button and it's still going. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Somebody left Episode 5, a DVD, no less, in their player. And it looks like it's from... This player was used as of 2014, because this is the uh, re-release from back when they put them on... No, it's not. It's from 2004. I'm doing a really shitty job with my camera here, guys. Sorry. 2004. I wonder if it's the non-shittified version. I mean the non-special edition. Hmm. Interesting. But anyway, before I put a Blu-ray disc in, let's, uh, let's go through the menu here. I honestly forget how to access the menu here. So I got the remote... Yeah, I know, no disc. System menu, here we go. This is what Blu-ray disc menus used to look like. So we got... Adjust setting, can't do that for some reason. The camera's gonna go in and out of focus here, guys, sorry. Ah, I remember this menu. Okay, so, 16 by 9 HDMI, that's fine. Actually, I, I could do that. Hopefully my monitor recognizes it and doesn't switch. There we go. 24 output on. Audio setup. Well, they had this. I don't know how they had this set up. DTS. And then left and right. And then audio. Auto. Language. Parental control. Speakers. 
This must be the manual controls or the manual <coughs> RCA in the back. Next screen. Center, yes, yes, yes. Okay, so let's hit back here. Um, options, on-screen display, auto power off, easy setup, HDMI control, hybrid disc playback. Fuck, it's not going to tell me anywhere what um, what firmware it is. Crap. Um, I know there's a way to do it, too. I can't think of it. Um, return, pop-up menu. I'm, I'm pushing buttons here to figure out. There is a video format button on the remote that would let you change resolutions on the fly. See, that's something that is solely missed on newer Blu-ray players. Uh, 1080p. Alright, so... I always did like that splash screen. I don't know if it's the same now for the PlayStation. Oh, by the way, Pirates of the Caribbean 3, I remember a player that's around this old, when I first bought it, took 17 minutes from when I clicked this button to close when I was watching the movie. That's including boot time, uh, load time, and of course skipping all the Disney ads. It's also an older Blu-ray disc too. And as you can see on here, very subtle HDMI and then HD just letting you know what's going on. Oops. Here there. But still, God, I love, I love the design of this player. It's so cool. And of course, a sticker, full HD. I remember all of their TVs that were 1080p back in the day because it was such a big deal used to have stickers on them that said full HD. Nowadays, of course, you've got a limited tag. Um, and by the way, it's fairly visible. I wonder if you can see it. Um, you can kind of down here, HDMI, you know, DTS, the all that jazz, uh, DVD. Come on, camera, focus. You're killing me here. Disc, of course, with the blue light and the nice bright big LED display, which you can dim down. Of course, this is the famous opening Disney Blu-ray track, which is actually really nice. I'm wondering why I'm not getting any sound, though. Oh, it's because I have um, my lead plugged in here for headphones for when I game. Da -da 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 -da. Let me hit top menu here. That was actually very quick. Ah, here we go. Wow. The ship's uh, logo or the Pirates of the Caribbean coin should... If my memory is correct, I haven't watched the disc in a while come up. Um, my hand's getting arthritis from holding this camera for so long. See the problem I'm having with my monitor here, folks? It's starting to happen up there, too. Those uh, pink dots. There's more of them every other day. That one's actually getting really bad. I'm going to have to get a new monitor soon. Alright, so it's telling me there's a DVD-ROM. Aha! Okay, so it's not a coin, sorry, it's the map that they use in the movie. In the, this movie and in the, uh, the, the fourth one. Holy shit! That was fucking quick! Wow, the firmware is either updated or it's just a different player. English, yes, please, thank you. Wow. Alright, camera, you're really starting to piss me off here. You have this stuff to focus on and this stuff. Wow. Now, a lot of people ask me, like, were older Blu-ray players, was their picture worse? No. It, you know, you're going to get full 1080p. I'm kind of wondering what the hell, why it looks like that. Um, maybe it's because it's on my computer monitor. I don't know. But, um, total menus, this is what killed it for me. There's going to be a line that might take a second to load. Yep, you saw it kind of load up there on the left-hand side. This was a very big deal for Disney back then. You get the, the dude talking up there while you have the map. Which is very beautiful, and then you have all the features here. But even this, even me... I'll, I'll shut up for a second. Even me going up and down on the menu, you can hear the player working, hopefully. I don't know, I guess it only did it once, but scene selection. And here I'm clicking. But it's not, you know, it's not keeping up. It's not bad, this is... This has been, what, a few minutes? Now, let's see how long it takes me to go. I, now, to be fair, I did skip the ads, so I will say that. So that's, I can't fault the player for all the damn ads that were in the previous freaking releases, but this is obviously not the quickest player to go up and down. Yeah, see, it's kind of chugging along here. Click. Bring up a stupid logo. Oh, see how he kind of hung in there? Looks like a happy face. 
on this goddamn monitor. Um, but Blu-ray players have come leaps and bounds. I mean, if I was to have this player plugged in and not tell anyone and ask them to watch a Blu-ray, it still looks amazing. It's still 1080p, it's still 24p, if your TV is compatible and if the disc is compatible. Um, Disney obviously makes very good Blu-ray discs. They're one of the few companies that even Blu-ray discs from, like, like I'm watching right now, from, you know, a, almost a decade ago, still look amazing. So I will give them credit. All right, let's skip this. Post. This is the stuff that I hate. Yeah, after I already select the fucking chapter, it brings up all this shit. It should be at the very beginning, and that's it. I clicked this. This is what I meant before, where it's slow. But obviously, you can't skip this stuff. So, so there we go. It's in CinemaScope, or scope, or widescreen for some of you. Let's hit the pop-up menu button. With this movie... Wow, I'm actually kind of impressed. I, I really am. I wish you could hear this, because it's a great, it's one of my favorite scenes. Let's get rid of the pop-up menu. Aha! That's that's showing its age a little bit, so... See it pop up, I hit the button right now. Did you see part of the logo kind of stayed? That's not burning or anything, that's just... It's the menu overlay, which some players back in the day had a piss poor time at working, but you'd never see that nowadays. And if you did, play it back and get a different one. But, um... Yeah, this is pretty cool. Um, I'm going to plug my headphones in and make sure this is actually working somehow. But, you know, it's it's been a while. Let me hit the system menu button again. Now that there's a disc in there. Aha, now it'll let me do AV control. So, while the movie's playing, weird. Usually it would cancel out the movie and go back to the main splash screen. Video control. Here we go. Default. Standard. Theater. Brighter room. Memory. Memory 2, Memory 3, let's go to Memory 1 and do Detailed Settings, White Balance, Hue, eh, that's fine, nothing amazing with that, Audio Control, uh, oh, Adjust Dynamic Range, let's turn that shit way off, and that's it, um, I don't know, if there's another way, yeah, title this, that's not important. I'm gonna figure out a way to get to the... <clears throat> to get to the, um... firmware, to see which version it is. I know it's possible, I just can't think of it. Another thing, too, I do like the LEDs on these. Like, that's a full display, it's not gonna cut anything off. But like I said, it's just a very nice player, and, uh, you know, for what I paid for it, <laughs> I'll definitely you know, keep it over there. I don't know if I'll use it to watch a movie, uh, seeing how I care about Dolby High Def Audio and stuff like that, but it's a great piece to think about and look at. Anyway, I'll be right back. Hey guys, I just took the top cover off. Um, I tried updating the firmware, and it didn't go through, probably because I used a DVD-R and not a CD-R. I tried updating the latest for America for the, uh, this area. I can't think. But, um, this is actually not... As bad as it's still warm. Uh, don't ever do this when it's plugged in, by the way. Mine's unplugged. I wish I could replace this. This is a little tired on the outside, but that's okay. Um, but there is a decent amount of dust in here. And dust leads to heat, and heat is electronics' number one enemy, besides water. And this you can see here is the chip. That is the heart of the Blu-ray player, but it's rather interesting. You know, I praise this thing for its love aesthetics, etc., but when you open her up, there's not how much in here. I mean, there's a big fucking gap here. Look at all the, the space. Well, like, you could easily shrink this thing down a little bit, but of course it was, you know, aesthetics and all that jazz. Um, like, she's not terribly... To somewhere out there, someone's going, You're gonna cause static discharge! Yeah. Whatever. Alright, fuck off. Thank you, but no thank you. This part here looks like it's the dirtiest. Everything else is pretty solid. I'm gonna go through a can with a can of air here. What's down there? Nothing. And this is, of course, the drive with the laser in it, which this is the stuff that really shrunk down over time. Um, manufactured October 2007. And I found out the firmware on this, I, if I didn't mention it already, I honestly forget. Um, the firmware on this is 2.67. The latest update is 5.5. I'm going to figure out a way to update this sucker at some point. It's not the biggest concern because, like you discovered with me live in the video, it's pretty updated, or pretty fast, I should say. 
bed. Bed for going. But uh, yeah, I forgot to show you the interior of this puppy. Yeah. Japanese design. Oh yeah. I think the whole thing was made in Japan back when everything was made in Japan. I'm sorry. Anyway, have a good night, guys. Later.